removing cards from your hand because if you want to do that, in certain points, you're going to have to give other players points or even cost yourself points. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game or card game review. This game for this week is Villages. It plays two to five player, takes about 45 minutes to play, and is for ages 10 and up. And it's a game you can find on the Game Crafter. In Villages, you are going to be basically holding a hand of cards, which are going to be your villagers, buildings, and pets, and farm animals, and creating sets, placing down towns. Every turn you'll be placing down towns, you'll have the option of giving away villagers as well as animals and whatnot and then you'll be doing things like attacking. Now the objective of the game is to empty your hand but only after having more points on your field than anybody else and it plays in rounds. So attempting to place out your villages, create the best most valuable villages as possible, keeping players from destroying your villages or even taking your character as hostage and then emptying your hand while holding the most points out on the field. Can you do it? Can you make the best village? Let's find out down below where I show you the game and then go come up and I'll give you my review. Welcome to The Village or Villages and Villages the Distant Lands expansion. And in the game I've set it up for two players but it can play up to five and the setup is the same except depending on the number of players you're going to be playing with will determine how many cards will be in the discard pile X which is equal to number of players. All you need to do to start the game off is give every single player a scorecard and or a player reference. The player reference is actually on the back. So when you're playing with two players, you can simply use both. Deal out eight cards from this pre-shuffled deck of cards and begin the game with the last player to, I don't know, create a village or live in a village or visit a village and start off by simply following the phases of the turn. The first phase of the turn is going to be to draw two cards from the deck here. After you draw two cards from the deck, then you're going to have the option to build a village if you can. In order to build the village, you're going to need to have three of the same type of card. However, it cannot be gray because gray cards are buildings and gray cards are going to be animals. So you'll be looking for purple, you'll be looking for red, orange, blue, and even yellow. And with the expansion, more in unique colors. If you cannot build, then you're going to have the option to give cards. Giving cards is a way to get rid of cards from your hand, but also benefit your opponents. And the way you're going to be able to give cards is if they happen to have a set of cards in a village or multiple villages, you can hand out that same color to them. So for instance, if this player over here happened to have a village that is yellow, just like that, and it was this player's turn, this player could choose to give this yellow farmer over to this player's yellow village. Now, of course, it doesn't benefit him as far as points go, but it does remove cards from their hand, which is what you need in order to end the round, and it also is going to prevent cards from staying in your hand at the end of the game, which can make you lose points. If you choose to or not choose to give out three cards, you'll move on to the last phase, which is going to be the act phase, where you'll discard a card and, or, or I mean, or you will attack. Discard a card is fairly simple. You'll choose any of these cards and you'll go ahead and discard a card into the discard pile. And attacking is also fairly simple. You can choose a card from one of your villages or from a card in your hand and you'll simply play that card to attack another player's village. So for instance, if this player happened to have a green village, we'll have this golem here, this king and this archer, and they wished to attack this yellow village here, they could do it in one of two ways. They could either say, I'm going to have this golem attack your village, in which case this player will have the option of either choosing one of these guys to defend the village or choosing a card from their hand to defend the village and then tallying up the power of each of the units. The other way that it can happen is a player over here can choose to play a card as a mercenary and place it face down and say I'm attacking this village here. In which case this player can also choose a card from their hand and place it down in defense. The other way is of course they can still choose a card from their village to defend as well. And then after that, you're going to go ahead and reveal the cards if you need to, 
tally up the power, and whoever has the most power it wins. In the attacker's case, if the attacker attacks a card from a village or a card from a player's hand, he'll have the option of either stealing that card or sending it to that player's discard pile. Stealing cards will let them go to their hand, whereas destroying them will put them in their own unique discard pile, which counts as negative points at the end of the game. However, regardless, the player who attacked, if they chose a card from their hand, that card is always going to go to their discard pile, which will count as negative points against them at the end of the game. After they've chosen to either attack or discard a card into the discard pile, then you're going to simply pass your turn. You'll move on to the next player. The next player will simply draw two cards and the turns will progress. Another thing to note too is when you're drawing cards, you can choose to draw them from the top of the deck or the top of the discard pile, or one of each. And when a player empties their full hand, whether it be by giving cards away, building villages out, or simply discarding them by attacking, uh, then the round is going to end after one more round, in which case you're going to tally the points. It'll be the player who has uh, points on the field, so you'll add these and score them up, negating from any points they might have of cards that they use to attack in the game. And if they had any cards in their hand at the end of the game, those would also be negated. So it's possible for you to get negative points in a round. You can use this thing here as a score tracker and determine how many how much score you have by simply using two cards on it. And of course, they can go up to 390 points. And then you'll play another round and continue the game villages. It's very simple, but there is a ton of unique and interesting things in the game. All of the characters have their own unique abilities, their power can fluctuate. The gold on the cards represents the point total, which you'll be scoring at the end of the game, whether it be positive or negative, it's in your discard pile or if it's in your attack or if it's in your hand. And of course, certain cards will combinate will combo with other cards. So using them in a specific area is going to benefit you. And you're also going to be able to use things like pets and unique uh, gray cards, which will help you in certain ways. Like destroy at any time to draw two cards from the deck. So some instant actions that can be used with the chicken or with the sheep, or while a tower, if it's in your village, can uh, reveal higher units that attack this building's village before choosing defending units. So it has some benefit for that specific village. But there's also rules regarding what can go into what village. And the rule is for all the farm animals, you have to have a farmer or a builder for the buildings. The other thing over here is the expansion. The expansion has a lot of the same stuff you would put into the base game, such as yellow and orange and green cards, but it also has some unique things as well. You're going to have these white ones, which are basically wilds, and these are the super villagers. You're going to have mushy marsh, or basically event cards. These are the distant lands, where every round you'll shuffle this deck up, and you'll flip over one of them, and you'll use the unique, unique effect for the entire round. So, for instance, look, let's look for one here. This one says here, play moves counterclockwise and all bonuses in ability text become negatives and vice versa. So negatives are positive, positives are negatives. Additional little animals, you're also going to be getting some unique twists and turns, like these guys here are gonna have two different colors on them, and these can be used in either village. So this guy here, he can go in a green village or a blue village. And then there's also black and white cards, which are just new colors. And of course, a bunch of new abilities for use. And that's pretty much the idea of villages. It's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward as to how it goes with a lot of unique combinations a ton of cards and a ton of complexity you wouldn't think is in a small game, which we'll come up and talk about now in my review. Villages is a unique tableau management and take that card game. It's going to have a unique twist on the normal tableau management as well as removing cards from your hand because if you want to do that, in certain points, you're going to have to give other players points or even cost yourself points. You want to always be, of course, positive and going out is going to score you bonus points and you're going to play over a multitude of rounds. Sometimes the games are really, really short. And if this game was just played over one round, I wouldn't actually find it to be that fun because it can be extremely swingy. However, played in a multitude of rounds, at least I think three or four, there's actually rules as to how many points you can go up to, but playing with more generates really interesting and unique twists 
and turns, and the game plays differently each and every time. And how you choose about going about placing down your towns and what cards you give away is going to potentially benefit you as well. Using cards that are very interesting, like for instance the Assassin, who can only actually do damage, he's basically one power, but if you use him face down when attacking as a hired merc, he instantly kills things, which is awesome. Or other unique twists, like in the expansion you have the kaiju character here. He has three attack and plus four attack power when attacking. And when he attacks, the, unique, the defender is actually in a unique position. He can go ahead and choose two defenders from his village to defend at the same time, which means that two characters can potentially take this big bad boy down, although he is a big bad boy. So there's a lot of twists and turns in the idea of fighting. And there's also a unique color wheel twist to the game too. When you're choosing to do certain things on the cards, it'll ask you, or it'll say something like, oh, the opposite of this color can't defend against this, this color. So if you look at the color wheel inside the rule book here, it tells you it. I'm not a great, we don't have a great memory for the color wheel, but if you have like a yellow character. Down here it, sh it shows you that across from it is purple, and that yellow character might say, purple units cannot or opposite color units cannot defend against this unit. Other things to note too are like the cards, the builder and the farmer. These guys are not great attackers or defenders, but they're worth a good amount of points, and having them in your village will allow you to place buildings and or animals like chickens, cows, and sheep and all that in your village. Buildings are basically going to make your villagers more defensible as well as more unique in certain areas. Maybe they'll give him plus attack, plus defense, unique ways to discard cards and draw new ones, or change the effect of your abilities. Speaking of uh, the buildings, we also have animals too, and these guys like the pig, chicken, and bunny, these present unique instant effects that you can play. So for instance, the pig here says you can destroy this uh, when you destroy this, send a unit from the animal's village to battle, plus two power to this unit. So this gives you plus two power to a unit in battle. Uh, this lets you draw two cards, and this one here lets you skip the action phase of any player's turn. So utilizing these little critters can be to your great benefit. And how you place cards down, obviously. All of the artwork is excellent. It's pixelated artwork. It's stuff I really like. I remember to the death. That was a really popular one I really enjoyed. And any of those other type of pixelated artwork styles, uh, the other one where you're building the tree, I can't remember what that one's called. It's also the Game Crafter. I'll post it down the link below. But I love this type of artwork. You might not like it. It's going to be based on preference, probably whether or not you're an 80s person or a Nintendo person. But for me, hands down, fun game. Really, really enjoyed this one. This is one of my favorite games that you can purchase on the Game Crafter. They've done a great job making this game and the expansion with a bunch of different unique twists and turns. People who are not going to like this game are probably people who do not like the take that aspect of games. There are some things where you can lose out on phases or prevent you from doing certain things because it has that take that nature. Sometimes you might not get the hand you need. For instance, if you have uh, two blue, two orange, and two green, and all of a sudden you get a red and a yellow, and then you get a a purple and a white and so you're not able to well, a white white's a while but in general you might not be able to build a village for a bit while other people might get a great hand three red and three green perfect village and village next turn and that can be detrimental which is why i'm saying in multiple rounds it makes up for it and you can see how it switches around there's always a chance that you can win the game no matter how far ahead somebody is there's the unique twists and turns too of high score and low score cards some of the cards in the game are going to give you a negative or positive benefit based on what a uh, card you have here the person at the end of the first round will get this high low score card if they have the lowest score and the highest score if they get the highest score and that can change the game as to how you play it and waste on the what cards do what for you in front of you really unique twist really unique concept i enjoyed this game a lot i think if this sounds like something you would like i would definitely suggest you check out the link in the description below currently on game crafter villages and of course the distance lands expansion let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section for me though fun little game outro. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, and hit that link down below in the description where you can pick up the game, as well as, of course, up above, hit that subscribe button and the bell. Hit the bell. Push those buttons, and you'll get more videos like this from us to check out more great card and board games. We've got some other cool stuff like miniature makers and unique twists, like top fives and whatnot. I keep saying unique twists in this video. I don't know why. <laughs> also, go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And our Discord. We're doing an auction every week. We show you what's coming up on our live stream every Wednesday at 6:30 p.m. PST. And you can join us for all this fun. I hope we see you. And if you're new, let us know. We'll have the welcoming party come in and give you tons of 
air hugs. Be safe, social distance. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. And as always, I look forward to visiting distant lands and villages with you. Well, you, you, you get it next time. <laughs>